When dealing with really big photographic images that come out of high resolution cameras, it can seem that Photoshop Elements slows down after a little while of manipulating or editing these pictures. There's a few things that you can do in order to make Photoshop Elements handle these files more efficiently and more speedily. And they're based around setting up Photoshop Elements correctly in the first place. Most of these controls are actually centered around the preferences, that's edit preferences options inside Photoshop Elements full edit space. So if we go to edit preferences and then general, let's have a look at some ways that we can actually set up Photoshop Elements to ensure that it works as efficiently as possible. To start with, a lot of people just use the general level of history states that comes when your software is first installed. Here we have history states set to 50. Now what history states are is basically recording the various steps that you take when you're editing a photo. Now imagine if you've got two or three photos open and you've performed 50 or 60 uh, different editing steps on each of those photos and you have your history states set to 50. This means that if you have three photos open you've actually saved 150 different um, editing steps and all of that is saved in the memory of your computer all of it takes up extra memory and will slow down just the general functioning of your machine. So lots of photographers, rather than having 50 set as their base history, sta his history states, they actually reduce that to 5 or 10. They figure if in 5 or 10 steps they can't, uh, they don't know they've made a mistake, well then uh, it's too late for them. So this will give you 5 or 10 steps to actually be able to move backwards in your in your editing process and to a place where you feel like you've made a mistake and start from that place again. Um, but it will actually free up a lot more memory when you're actually working with uh, Photoshop Elements. Let's have a look at some other options that you've got. Second thing that we'll look at is the plug-in and scratch disks. Now when Photoshop Elements runs out of memory it actually uses part of your computer's hard disk as extra or fake memory and it does this using a system called Scratch Disks. Now when you first install Photoshop Elements, the Scratch Disk is set to the startup disk. Now this might be C drive on your machine, or it might be another drive depending on where you've got Photoshop Elements installed. One way to improve the way in which Photoshop Elements functions is to move that Scratch Disk to another dedicated drive on your machine. On this machine, we have both C and D drives, C drive is our startup disk as well. And so the best option that we have here is actually to move our scratch disk to D drive. The other thing to look out for is that Windows actually uses part of um, your drives as extra memory as well. And this is called virtual memory in Windows. And it's a good idea to make sure that your Photoshop scratch disk and your Windows virtual memory drive are on separate drives. So in this case, Windows uses C drive. Photoshop uses D drive. Now if you have other disks associated with your machine, well then you can select those um, in second, third and fourth positions that you see here as well. Let's have a look at memory and image cache preferences because that's another place where we can speed up Photoshop elements. Uh, the cache levels, these cache levels are used to speed up how the image is drawn. Higher the level here, uh, selected will increase the speed with which your image is drawn and how accurately it's drawn. Less levels uh, will take up less memory and files will open more quickly but they will be less accurate when you actually view them at different uh, magnifications. The memory usage, a lot of people are tempted to push this right up to 100%. Uh, the problem with doing that is that your computer, whilst it's running Photoshop Elements, also needs to run some operating system files as well. And this actually needs space uh, to run. So if you're running one gig of memory as we are here, 70% um, is a good recommendation. If you're running more than one gig, well then you can use a slightly higher value. If you're running uh, 512, then you might want to use a slightly lower value. But with Photoshop Elements, one gig is pretty much the minimum that you'll need to do any serious kind of editing. So if you set, that, set up these preferences, 
uh, you'll need to exit the program and restart it again for them to take hold and it, you'll end up finding that Photoshop Elements will function much more efficiently than before.